This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Sometimes when we're error trapping, we don't actually want to put a message out on the screen. We just want to catch the error, effectively skip by it, and then continue on from where we left off. If we look at the error trap resume, what you'll find here is we have a similar thing to the error trapping that we have a cube root routine. But what it does is it allows you to highlight a range of cells, then run the sub procedure, which is keyboard shortcutted as well as control shift and Y, and it will convert all the cells in the range to their cube root value. So you can see that that worked quite happily. And just like previously, if we were then to run it again, it would cube root those values. However, replace one of the values with a piece of text or a negative number. Rehighlight the range and run. And we find that we hit one of the awful VBA messages that says runtime error 13 type mismatch. That's the text that it's hit first. So if I were to click end, that then drops me out. But what it hasn't done is continued down the rest. That's probably better demonstrated with some large numbers that we know the cube root of. So if I highlight this range here, run my shortcut, Control Shift Y, we hit the error message because it's hit the guy bit. I click End, and we can see that it's done cube root, cube root, cube root, cube root, hits guy, that generates the error, and then it, it doesn't cube root the rest. So what we need to do is effectively catch that error coming in, then really tell the VBA to ignore it and continue on down. We can achieve that in our Visual Basic code. I use now first line for errors. So we say on error. And instead of go to, we say resume. What we ask it to do is resume next. Now you can either leave it as resume, in which case when it hits an error, it just carries on. But then we're going to keep hitting that guy error. Or we choose resume next, in which case it will go to the next command. In our case here, where we're looping through a selection, it will go to the next X in this case. So we don't need to say go to and produce a little error trap down here. We just say if there's an error, just carry on to the next step. So effectively ignore this problem, and go to the next step. Now that's not always ideal to go away just saying ignore, ignore, ignore. But in this particular case, it's what we're after. We want it to, okay, there's a guy in the way, that's a problem. Just ignore it and carry on cube rooting the rest, please. So let's see if that works. Put all these back to largest values. So if I take my column there, Control Shift Y, we can see it quite happily does all of them and effectively is ignoring the guy. We don't see any error messages. There is a problem. It can't cube root guy, but it just skips past it because of our one little line of code. So on error, resume next. Let's just go on to the next one. So if there were lots of problems, if I had minus ones in there, etc., it would just skip past them all. So I went 64. Guy, 64, 56, 786, minus 4. So I have a really big number in there now. Let it work out the cube root of that. So now we can see there are going to be two possible problems. A bit of text and a negative number. Control Shift Y. They effectively just skipped over. You can see it does that in a GIF. Nice little line. On error, resume next. So instead of on error, go to, and then adding a label, and then having to build the label in so that you can tell it what to do, here we're telling it to just effectively ignore. That's what it should say, really, on error, ignore. But it says on error, resume next. So go on to the next stage.